is the subtransit uh, period and the reactance at this point is called the subtransit reactance far from the generator and now what happens when the fault occurs far from the generator on the bus the graph is like this it is symmetrical graph uh, far from the generator there are other reactants also getting up uh, reactants of the line reactants of other equipment so there is a little effect of subtransit and transit reactants first of all we will calculate the per unit of a grid z per unit is a percentage uh, dependence per unit of a grid percentage dependence of per unit of a grid is called z ohms by z base so to calculate the per unit impedance of the grid we need should know about the z ohm what is the value of z ohm and what is the value of z base this example here is a grid and this is 33 by 11 kv this is 33 kv bus and this is 11 kv bus and this is a symmetrical short circuit current is called to i k double h is called c u n divided by z k that is 1.1 c u n is the voltage what is Hello friends, welcome to Electrical Design Engineering YouTube channel. Today is our lecture number 19 of our free course on ATAP. In today's lecture, we will see the example and we will calculate the short circuit current, initial uh, short circuit symmetrical current. By taking a simple example, we can also show you Excel sheet, in the Excel sheet how you can calculate the short circuit current. After that, we will take an example for uh, ETAP in the ETAP software and we can perform the short circuit analysis of that example which we have calculated by hand and we will see the results and compare the results of all these hand calculation, Excel sheet and the ETAP results. First of all, you should know about uh, Fault current fault near to the generator. If the fault occurs near to the generator, the graph of the fault is like this. It is asymmetrical fault. Because for fault close to the generator, the fault current reduces from initial value as the generator reactance varies from subtransit to transit and then to steady state. You can see there are three period is subtransit period, transit period, and steady state period. When the fault occurs near the generator. The reactance changes from subtransient to reactance to transient reactance and then to steady state reactance. Then the decay of AC current is depend on the subtransient, transit, and steady state reactance of the synchronous machine. The decay of DC component is dependent on the armature time constant. Subtransit reactance. It represents the reactance of the machine during the first few cycles in milliseconds following a fault, such as the short circuit. The subtransit period is the very short you know, time of a disturbance where the machine's current reaches its peak value. This is the subtransit uh, period, and the reactance at this point is called the subtransit reactance. It represents uh, transit reactance. It represents the machine's reactance during the transit period. This period is called the transit period, and the reactance at this time of the machine is called the transit reactance which lasts longer than the subtransit period but it is still a short event typically of few seconds subtransit reactance subtransit period is of milliseconds and it is of few seconds steady state reactance it refers to the reactors of a synchronous machine such as generator or motor under normal operating conditions after all transit and subtransit effects have been have decayed and the machine has centered in the stable uh, continuous operation. Now fault far from the generator. And now what happens when the fault occurs far from the generator on the bus? The graph is like this. It is symmetrical graph. The, this is a short circuit condition far from the generator during which the magnitude of symmetrical AC component of available short circuit current remains essentially constant. The fault on only on the grid bus for from the generator is removed from the generator. Hence, the change in the subtransit and transit reactance will not have any a big change in the net react, uh, total reactance as there are many other reactant components or uh, equipment in series up to the grid. When a fault occurs at uh, far from the generator, there are other reactants also getting up. Uh, reactance of the line, reactance of other equipment. So there is a little effect of subtransit and transit reactance. That is why this graph is symmetrical. Uh, 
and the DC component uh, decays very shortly. Now, well, now we will take a simple example. We will take this example here. This is a grid, and this is 33 by 11 kV. This is a 33 kV bus, and this is 11 kV bus, and this is a power transfer of 15 MVA, 33 by 11 kV, and 10% of Z uh, rectus, and lumped load of 8 MVA. Okay. What data will you need? First of all, you need a grid data. From the grid data, you need a grid voltage, 33 voltage, X by R ratio of the grid, fault MVA. And from transfer, you need the voltage rating, MVA rating, and percentage impedance, and X by R ratio. And in load data, you need voltage rating of the load, MVA rating of the load, motor load, static load, power factor, and the base MVA. These are the data you need to perform the short circuit analysis. First of all, we will calculate the per unit of a grid. Z per unit is a percentage uh, impedance per unit of a grid. Percentage impedance of per unit of a grid is called Z ohms by Z base. So to calculate the per unit impedance of the grid, we need should know about the Z ohm, what is the value of Z ohm and what is the value of Z base. Z base is called V base square divided by S base. V base is the voltage base and S base is the MVA base. And voltage base here is 33 square divided by 100 MVA, that is the base of MVA. And it becomes 10.89 ohms. Fault MVA is called the base MVA divided by X per unit. Now, here we have found the Z base. Now we have found the Z ohms or Z uh, per unit. So, fault MVA is called the base MVA divided by X per unit. And X per unit can be calculated by base MVA divided by the fault MVA because you can take here X per unit here and fault MVA here. Base MVA is 100 and fault MVA is already 1800.47 and it becomes 0 0.055 ohm. Now R per unit is called X per unit divided by X by R. X per unit is 0 0.055 divided by X, per, X by R of the grid is 14 and it becomes 0 0.0039 z per unit is under root of r per r square plus x square that is 0 0.039 square plus 0 0.55 square it becomes 0 0.0551 ohm now z per unit has been calculated z base is also calculated here now we can calculate z ohms z ohms is called z per unit to z base that is 0 0.589 now we know the Z per unit of the grid and Z ohms of the grid and Z base of the grid. Now we will calculate the Z per unit of a transformer. Here the, here the base changes. So Z per unit, uh, Z per unit of a transformer is equal to Z per unit of old base, they were old base but new base divided by no, new base divided by voltage base. This is the formula which I, you have studied in the uh, big tech. I do not to explain this. And Z per unit is called 0 0.1 to 33 by 11 by square, 100 by 15. This is the old base and this is the new base. This new base is the transformer base that is 30, 15 MVA rating of the transformer and becomes 0 0.67. X per unit is Z per unit into X by R under root of 1 plus X by R ka whole square. When we solve this, it becomes X. Uh, Imperial that is x per unit. We're putting these values of that per unit and x by r ratio, and you can get it. The x per unit is called as 0 0.66. Okay. Now r per unit is x per unit divided by x by r ratio, that is 0 0.055 divided by 14, that is 0 0.0039. Now we have to calculate the Z k, Z per unit k, Z per unit k is Z per unit of generator plus Z per unit of the transform. Z per unit k means that impedance up to the fault point. We have considered the fault here on third bus, that is the bus two uh, on the load bus. So we should know that Z per unit of the grid, Z per unit of the transformer. And multiple and Z per unit in Z k is called 0 0.0551 plus 0 0.667 into 0 0.772. Okay. Now we have no, uh, we have calculated the Z k for the now we have uh, calculated the initial symmetrical short circuit current. 
the initial symmetrical short circuit current is equal to i k double h is equal to c u n divided by z k that is 1.1 c u n is the voltage so what is the, from which side we have to calculate the uh fault current from we have to calculate from 11 q side so we can take here 11 side 11 k is so c is equal to 1.1 this is the voltage factor uh, uh, divided by under root of 3 into 0 percent so uh, sorry we have forgot to mention here so zero, uh, under root of 3 it becomes a 9.67 kilo amperes okay now uh, voltage factor you can get the voltage factor from here the nominal voltage is when the voltage is 100 volt to 1 kilo 1000 volt the nominal voltage is considered as 1.05 and the minimum short circuit current is 0 0.05 c max or c min is we have taken the max here and medium voltage for medium voltage that means uh, 1 kilo to 35 it is 1.1 and for high voltage it is also 1.1 and here for minimum it is 1 c factor we can take here 1.1 because 11 kv it comes in this range it's just taken from the iec 0038 table third and this is taken first and this is table uh, IV. These are the values mentioned in there and it taken from the IEC K0038. So we have calculated the uh, initial symmetrical short circuit 9.67. Now we can see what the Excel sheet. I have made also a simple Excel sheet. You can see that also. This is the Excel sheet which we have made. You can see this is the source or a grid data all these data which we have already tell you what data we need and this is transformer data and this is the load data and this is the calculations you can compare these calculations with the hand calculation as you can how it is completely matching and you will finally get the initial symmetrical short circuit current that is 6.9.662 one thing is that if we change here something suppose we can change uh suppose we can change here uh, 20 we will see what will happen there will be not more no major change let it be we can change here uh, to x by r ratio 20 there will be some change maybe no not a little bit no not much here we can change 30 and we will see what will happen there see the other uh, initial symmetrical short circuit current has been changed all the parameters are changed you can say likely do that thing suppose if we take here 11.5 voltage then there will be maybe some change here you can see anything you can change here and you will get the result of what will the initial symmetrical short circuit current here you can get the result if you change the load has not affected much effect on that okay now in the next lecture we will Take the same example and see in the ETAP what are the results, whether we get the same result or we can get a different results. We can compare them, these three results, Excel sheet results, uh, hand calculation and ETAP results. Thank you.